everyone, my name is Ebert and today we are talking about drawing. So you might have been using the software for a while, but sometimes there's some little things that you don't know because, you know, Toolboom actually cares about their softwares and they keep updating it year after year. So there's always new things that you might miss out on and I'm here to help you not miss out on them. Yay! So brush and pencil tips and tricks, my favorite little things with these tools. So I'm going to show you how to use these little icons and a lot of it are common to the brush and the pencil. So I'm just going to show you both at the same time. One very useful thing to use is the draw behind feature. So let's say I'm drawing something with my brush or with my pencil. If I use the draw behind feature, which is located right here under your little parameters, and I take another color, you know, it's going to draw behind either with my pencil or with my brush. Don't forget to set it also with your brush, because if you use the pencil and the brush, it is both the same icon, but they're not going to be activated at the same time. This is because sometimes you want your brush to be into the draw behind mode and not the pencil and vice versa. So always make sure that you activate it in the tool that you want and then voila, it's going to appear behind. So that was a pretty easy one. Now, how do I use it? With my brush tool, I use it often to make like inverted coloring. Like if I have a drawing like this, I'm gonna draw a little bird. And I'm gonna color it in. Oftentimes I would just do what I call cell painting coloring, where with the draw behind tool, I will always keep drawing behind. So if I wanna draw the beak, I'm gonna draw it first, then maybe the inside of the eyes. And then maybe I'm gonna draw like the, the eye whites. And since you keep going behind, it works like that. So that can be cool for a quick little style like this. That's usually why I use it for the brush tool. Or, you know, if I just want to make um, a quick mask behind my animation, I'm just going to make a big blob behind and it works. So with the brush, eh, I don't use it that often, but with the pencil, I use it all the time because if I'm cleaning something with my pencil, if I have like a cat tail like this um, with stripes, and the stripes are a different color, oftentimes I would just set it to draw behind and take the stripes color and just you know, do something like this and then cut it away. And then, you know, my lines are already behind the other one. So that's what I would do with a draw behind tool. I use it very, very often. So I thought I'd show you this. The other thing that I use constantly is the autofill. Now the autofill is, is available both into the brush and into the pencil. And basically, if you activate it and you draw something, if you touch back to where you started, it's going to fill your shape automatically. Now, this is amazing. So for the brush, I use it to draw highlight and shadows. So if I, have a, if I have a character and I need to, you know, draw these blobs of highlight and shadows, then it's so much faster to just be able to draw those. Um, so if I wanted to draw the shadows on that tail, then I would just do something like this and it's filled. So for quick and easy shadows, it can be very useful. I also use it to make FX blobs. Uh, if I have to clean smoke or water or something, you can just, draw the shape and then when you close it it's painted it's just an extra step you don't have to do furthermore if you draw your shape if you press on control or command on a Mac it's going to close your line as you go so that can be very useful if you're just doing some quick thing it's just fun and fast of course the control thing works also if you don't use the auto fill though I don't typically use it without it I really just like to make my shape fast like that so that's the auto fill the pencil tool also has an autofill, so it's right there, autofill, and you know, it's going to do the same thing as the brush. And it's also going to work with the control button, Ta -da! you know, control or command on a Mac. With the pencil though, where it gets very interesting is that if you go here, we have a trim extra line button. So if I do this, fish shape, it'll cut away what I don't need. So if I don't activate it, I would have these things left sometimes you want them but most of the time you don't and instead of having to cut them after you can just use the trim extra line and use it to cut it so when i draw fire or effects it's very useful effects are typically done with the brush but i know that when i worked for some disney productions they really insisted on having the effects cleaned with the pencil line uh, this is due to you know when you have a camera motion maybe you want the texture to be like that or sometimes they wanted to get the effects of smoke for example have an outline and then the color inside was different and it was just faster to uh, do it with the pencil. So what you can do with the pencil is use the auto fill and the trim extra line. And if you go to your colors, you'll be able to go here and you can link the three colors or you can click it to unlink the colors. And then you can say that my contour, like my pencil color will be this one. And then the paint bucket will be, will be the other one. So then if I draw my shape, my line is made with the pink 
and when I release, it's filled with the yellow shape already. So if I were to clean up smoke, then it's just way faster to do something like this. Uh, so that's how you would use it with the pencil. Other thing with the brush that I love, love, love to do is if I have an animation, sometimes I like to take a very textured bitmap brush. Or, you know, also just with a vector, but uh, it's specifically great with a textured vector brush. And I can take this with the auto fill. And when I draw the shape, it's going to fill it with the color. Then again, I would need to <laughs> link my colors together again. Boop. Yeah, like this. And it's going to give me a closed shape with colors. And sometimes when I do small projects that I want to be a bit more crafty with, this is really good if you have like a drawing, if I draw like a cat tail again, <laughs> where I would have the line work, but maybe the line work is not completed. A bit like Ernest and Celestine, little thing with the mouse and the bear. And uh, these things are beautiful, but they do require more time. So it's not something you would use commonly on production. But then if I wanted to paint this with a more textured approach, I would go on my color art, get my color, but instead, I would make the zone myself uh, like that. And of course, use the autofill to uh, fill it like this. And then maybe I would take another color and then I would start to make my zones like that. It is not something super efficient, but you know, there's no efficient ways to paint like that because uh, this is very close to how we used to paint on cell animation, so by hand. So if you want to do something like this, I absolutely love to use the autofill with the brush. You know, and you can pair it with the draw behind as well to add some extra things or whatever. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Don't forget that to change the size of your cursor, you can use the O shortcut to change the size of your cursor. By the way, if you have your pencil, I forgot to say, but in a trim extra line, if you want your <laughs> lines to not be too pointy, you can use the align handles after trim to make it a bit more round. It can be helpful sometimes. And um, yeah, I hope you liked it. <laughs> have a nice day.